So now we'll start creating our create to do function. There are about five steps uh, inside the create to do function. First, what we'll do is we'll uh, decode the body of the request that we'll receive from the user, okay, from JSON, and then we'll decode it. And then the second step will be a simple validation where we'll check if uh, the request that the user has sent has a title or not. So if it has a title, only then we'll proceed. If it doesn't have a title, we'll display an error saying the title field is required. It's a validation. The third step is that we'll start creating a to-do model uh, because we want to you know, start prepping up the model which we want to send into our database. The fourth step is obviously to send that model that we just create uh, based on the request that we've received uh, into the uh, database. And the last stage, the fifth stage is uh, we'll send a response back to the user, the front end, saying that the to-do was created successfully. Right, so let's get started with these steps. So this, so this is the create to-do function. It has w, which is a response writer, and it has r, which is a request. Okay, so obviously we need two things. We need to re receive a request and we need to send a response. And we'll create a variable t of type to do. Okay, and to do has already been defined earlier, as you can see. To do is a struct which has ID title completed and created at. Alright, so let's go back to our create to do function. Now, like I said, we'll first decode the JSON using new decoder, json.newdecoder. And JSON is the package that we get with encoding slash JSON out here that we had imported. If you have not written this, then please make sure that this is imported uh, on top, encoding slash JSON. Without this, it won't work. And uh, so json.newdecoder, and then we'll put the r dot body inside that. Dot decode and ampersand r t, sorry, because we want the value to be inside t now. So whatever value was there in uh, r dot body, we want to decode it and put it inside t, right? And if error not equal to null, which means error is there, this is what we want to do. We want to take our renderer and we want to history dot status processing and we want to show them the error, show the error to the front end, right? And we want to return from this function. So that's pretty clear, I think. Now the second stage where I said we'll put some validation. Now that we have uh, the to do that we've rec received from the user in the request, we have that as T now after decoding it, right? We decoded R dot body and we have it in T now. So we can access the title of T, right? And we can check if it's uh, an empty string. If it's an empty string, then we want to display an error again to the user http dot status bad request renderer dot capital M and we want to send a message that the title is required. All right. and then we'll just return from this. So we have two stages which have been completed in our create to do. Now the third stage is to start uh, creating a to do model, right? So you have seen that we have a to do struct and we have a to do model struct. From to do struct that we receive from the user, we want to create into a to do model struct that we can, which will mean BSON that we can start sending to our database, right? And uh, that's what we'll start creating. So this is, I think, the most important part. So we have a to-do model, and we have an ID, BSON dot new object ID. We'll have a title, t dot title. So we created a new ID completely. We took the title from T that we have uh, decoded from JSON, right? And completed by default will be false because whenever you create a new to-do, it, it won't be completed, right? 
and created at will be time the time package that we had imported dot now please make sure you had imported the time package all right so now everything looks good every everything is pretty good so far so three steps are complete all right now the fourth step like i said is now actually sending this to do model to the database so that means we'll have to start talking to our database which is db is our database dot c is the collection and dot insert is the method in mongodb and we want to insert tm right we want to insert tm inside this database now if error not equal to nil that means if error is there and i think i have made a mistake here on top i should have written nil but i wrote null by mistake yeah so coming back to this function error is nil let's say rnd dot json w comma http dot status processing and renderer dot message m we'll, we'll give them a message failed to save to do now obviously uh, these kind of messages right the errors and all of those things since it's a very small trial app you don't have to do all of this but these are best practices so i'd suggest you get used to all this from the beginning itself so now that we have sent the data to the database the last stage <coughs> forgot the return statement here yeah so the last stage is the fifth stage which is is basically sending a response to the front end saying that to was created successfully so that's what we'll do we'll say rnd.json w comma http dot status created renderer dot message to do created successfully to do id tm dot id dot hex all right so this was our entire create to do function let me remove this extra space out here so we have successfully created our fetch to do's and our create to do function if you've reached this far, you should be proud of yourself. And if you're understanding uh, all of this, you should be really proud of yourself because you've come pretty far. And now the next step is to create uh, the delete to do function. Has four stages. The first stage includes working with your URL parameters like ID that you'll pass as part of uh, the HTTP request and assigning that to an ID variable that we'll be using later on. The second stage, uh, involves checking whether the id that we have sent uh, as part of the request is in fact uh, an, uh, hex or not and uh, the third stage is working with uh, the database and removing the particular uh, record with that id and the fourth stage is uh, writing to the front end uh, sending a response saying the to do was deleted successfully right so we have these four stages the delete to do function is going to be rather short actually uh, but before that, you can see that uh, in my hex uh, line, right, in this line, uh, in my create to do function where I've written hex, there's a small squiggly line. That's only because a comma is missing. So if you, uh, you can go ahead and put that comma and everything will uh, be completely fine. And now let's start creating our delete to do function. Sorry. Uh, it will uh, be very standard. We'll have the W, which will be a response writer and we'll have r which will be http dot request all right so like i said we want uh, we want this variable id which will have uh, we'll basically assign it the id that we'll receive from the url parameters 
So if this line is looking confusing to you, it's basically simply that the CHI middleware that we're using for routing, uh, we'll receive our URL par parameter inside that, right? So uh, that's how we can access this. R is our request and ID is uh, the field that we want and that will assign to ID, right? And strings is basically helping us to trim and you know, get this ID and assign to it, right? Now the second stage is to check whether our ID is in fact X. If it's not, then we need to send an error to the front end saying that uh, it's a invalid ID. Status add request comma renderer dot m okay and then the message message will be the id is invalid there's a comma at the end and obviously after this we have to say return so when this is sorted second stage is sorted the third stage is uh working with the database itself so this will be the only uh slightly complex kind of a stage in our function. So let's get started. So DB is the database that we've defined all year. C is the collection name. We have to pass the collection name, which we've defined as a constant earlier. Remove ID is a uh, MongoDB function. And bson dot, we'll pass the object ID here, but it has to be in hex, right? So we'll pass object ID hex function will convert our ID into hex. If uh, we did receive an error, which is error not equal to nil, then we want to send to something to the front end. We want to send a response to the front end. Uh, so it will be status processing comma renderer dot m. And here we will say message failed to delete to do comma error and we'll pass the error itself and at the end we have to put a comma uh, you can check for this comma if after end of all lines uh, just to make sure you're not getting any squiggly lines because that will lead to errors later on when we compile the code and then we'll have a return here finally um, we want to respond uh, send a response to the front end saying that the to do was successfully deleted so let's create that that's the last stage json w comma http dot uh, status okay so all these statuses they have a capital s right so everywhere status bad request right status processing status okay all of these have a capital s just make sure of that that's a very common mistake and that can lead to errors again dot m and you'll have message and to do deleted Fully. and comma again after that right so if I don't put a comma I'll get a squiggly line there you can see that I put a comma it goes away so everything looks good we have uh, our delete function delete to do we have our create to do we have our fetch to do and now we have to work with update to do which is uh, like people find it slightly complex but it's not really very complicated uh, so now let's start looking at that